Hi, Farouk here at directop.net, and for this week, we will talk about deliberate practice. Let's make this straight. Your FE exam prep is not just about knowing the knowledge or the material. So don't get me wrong, that material knowledge is going to be an important aspect in your preparation. So you want to be making sure you're being exposed to quality practice questions, you're using updated and relevant FE resources, and you're just getting as much practice in as possible by using good resources, the right resources. In fact, this is exactly what we offer here at Direct Hub. Relevant, updated, and the right resources to help you prepare and to help you pass your FE exam. So that's the material part. But there's also another important part that we must prepare for for this FE exam. And that's going to involve our approach, our approach to the FE exam. And that approach consists of two parts. So mainly it's going to be your study approach, your study approach as you're studying, and also your approach on exam day. So your time management strategy or the plan you have for exam day that you are ready to employ to help you pass this FE exam. Now let's focus on that approach, specifically that study approach that we're using as we're doing a bunch of these practice questions. So we have to use the right study approach for this FE exam where we feel like we're actually learning, where we're retaining the information we learn, where we're not easily forgetting what we learned in the previous sections, and where we're hitting our daily and weekly study goals, and lastly, where we feel like we're just getting better. And I don't know about you, when I feel like I'm getting better, this is how my confidence is gradually being built. So as we get better, you're bound to build and regain your confidence. So how can we ensure we have this right study approach as we're preparing for this FE exam? Deliberate practice. So we have to make sure we're deliberately solving as many practice questions as we can before our exam day. So deliberate practice is not like regular practice. In fact, it's going to require a lot of mental energy. So deliberate practice is going to be both purposeful and systematic. It's not like regular practice that relies mainly on repetition and where we do not really use feedback to learn from our mistakes and errors but deliberate practice does use feedback and it's going to be ultra focused with high attention and it's going to be done with a specific clear goal of improving our performance. Deliberate practice is all about active learning where we're actively engaging with the material, where we're actively solving problems, where we're actively thinking about the process or thinking about the concept and actively developing our own solutions and struggling through practice problems with the end goal of recreating our own solutions. Whereas passive learning is about passively looking at the solution or passively watching videos or just looking at the written solution and copying the written solution or maybe mindlessly just copying the steps we saw in the video or a written solution. So deliberate practice is all about active learning. Before we talk about the four main characteristics of deliberate practice, I just wanna say one thing. Deliberate practice does require a lot of your mental capacity. So make sure you're somewhat well rested and refreshed. So whether it may be after school or after work or maybe both, make sure you refresh and get just enough rest before going into your study session. This may involve just taking a walk or maybe getting your workout in or maybe meditating or possibly getting a quick nap in. And lastly, it might just be taking a break for that day to help you de-stress and refresh for the next day. So make sure before you dive into these study sessions that you're somewhat well rested because this type of practice strategy does require a lot of your mental capacity. Number one, your deliberate practice must be purposeful with a clear defined study goal. And this all goes back to a study planner. You must have a study plan for that week. So let's say you can use the direct hub study planner and denote specifically for that week what you wanna cover or maybe for, you can use a simple Google Calendar, denote your study time blocks for that week. Let's say you have a two hour study time block after work for each day. And for that study time block, you wanna specifically define your study goals. 
And this maybe involves something like this. So you want to ask yourself, what specific section, FE section, do you want to cover? Maybe under mathematics, you want to cover analytic geometry. Or maybe you can take it a step further and be very specific and say, you want to cover conic sections. You want to cover all the conic sections, practice problems. Or maybe if you're using the course, you want to say, okay, I will look through the lesson material first, make sure I'm understanding that, the conceptual lesson notes, then I'm going to dive into the practice questions for analytic geometry. So you have to have a clear, specific study goal, and the best way to do that is have a study plan. Your study goal can be big as really asking yourself at the end of each study session, am I understanding what I just learned? Do I understand what we just covered or the practice problems I covered? Do I understand the process, the essence of the concept, and can I move on to the next section. Number two, deliberate practice will require you to be focused and highly concentrated where you're not getting easily distracted. So you wanna absolutely clear up and tidy up your workspace from all distractions. And also you wanna make sure you find the right study environment that allows you to be focused. And on top of that, you may wanna mimic the FE exam testing conditions as much as possible by just having your calculator by having your computer screen with the FE handbook, by having your notepad and a pencil. So you're mimicking the actual testing day conditions. And if you're just starting out, I highly recommend that you apply the famous Pomodoro study technique. And I'll make sure to link that below. And lastly, if you just find yourself getting easily distracted or too distracted, just note down these distractions. So know what your distractions are. Is it going to be your phone? If it is, Turn it off or maybe just silence it, silence all notifications, or maybe use a specific application on the phone that will help you not get distracted. I'll make sure to link some below as well. Or maybe you can put the phone in a different room just to avoid that phone. Or it might be the laptop, it might be tabs on the laptop. And for that, I recommend certain applications as well, which I'll also link below. And to finish this off, maybe it's your thoughts that are distracting you, or maybe you just have too much going on. What I recommend is having a notepad and writing down these thoughts. So write down these thoughts, note them in your notepad, and if something's immediate and you can do it real quick, do it real quick, check it off, and come back to your notepad and leave the rest for later. Your goal at this time is to study and deliberately practice and have a good study session and just finish that off. You have these down in your notepad, so there's no need to worry, you'll come back to them. Number three, deliberate practice is all about feedback. In fact, the biggest difference between deliberate and regular practice is feedback. So you wanna make sure you're getting constant feedback on your progress and performance as you're doing a lot of practice questions. So what does feedback look like? So the best form of feedback you'll ever get is by doing a lot of practice questions. So practice questions will give you the feedback you need to break down your weak spots. So your weak spots is gonna be involved the weaknesses and the strengths. And we get that from feedback by doing a lot of practice questions. So these practice questions will help you know what specific section are you struggling with. Maybe it's a specific FE section or a topic, or maybe it's gonna be a specific problem. Let's say it's a trust analysis type practice question that you seem to be struggling with. That is valuable feedback on your weakness specifically for that specific problem. So you wanna note that down and you wanna note down all of your weak areas or your weak spots as you're doing a lot of practice questions. And also for something like the FE exam, Feedback doesn't necessarily have to be just about the sections. So it doesn't have to be just about the knowledge or the sections we're trying to learn. It can be something as like the unit conversions or unit conversion mistakes we're making. So we have to note that down as a weak spot, as a weakness. And also it could be just overthinking or thinking too much or spending too much time on a problem statement where we shouldn't. And also it may be just reading a problem statement and not really understanding what the problem statement is asking, or maybe overthinking when we're reading that problem statement. So we have to note that down as a weak spot. 
So this is all feedback. Having your weaknesses summed up on a sheet of paper is gonna make things a lot more manageable. So then you can go weakness by weakness. So let's say you start with the first one. Let's say it's trust analysis practice questions that were weakened. You go there and you wanna go back and review the concept. So read through the lesson conceptual videos or read through the lesson notes or maybe read through your prep book talking about the concept. Then you wanna attempt and do more practice questions. And don't worry, if you get these wrong, just know why you're getting them wrong. Again, you're using feedback again. So we did feedback initially, now you're applying more feedback. So if you get questions wrong, don't just look at the solution. Don't quickly dive into the solution. Know why you're getting it wrong by actually struggling through it and by actually going back to the concept and noting down where you messed up on. Maybe it's a specific step, maybe you missed a sign, or maybe you didn't apply the moment equation right, stuff like that. Number four, deliberate practice is about pushing beyond your comfort zone where you're creating a higher standard for yourself, you're adapting and you're creating a new normal. And for the most part, this may come naturally. So let's say at the very beginning, you can only commit to 30 minutes of study time. That's fine. So that's totally normal and that's fine. So 30 minutes is all you can do at the very beginning. But then let's say after maybe two weeks, you increase that to 45 minutes. Maybe after three weeks, you increase that to one hour. Maybe after two months or a month, you can commit to two hours of deliberate practice, of full focus, deliberate practice. So here you're gradually increasing your study time. And this is what we mean by moving beyond our comfort zone and pushing beyond your comfort zone will also require you to do those very important full length practice exams. So I recommend to all my students to do at least two full length practice exams after their content review stage. So use these practice exams to get feedback. So these practice exams will help test your understanding. They will help build your endurance for a five hour and 20 minute exam and also help you develop a test taking or time management strategy that you're ready to employ on exam day. And when you're doing these practice exams, if you get questions wrong, again, don't just dive into the solution and quickly read over the solution and look at the solution convincing yourself, okay, this is the silly mistake I made, or I missed this step, let's just move on. Because a lot of the time, that's not the problem. A lot of the time, it's your lack of conceptual understanding that made you get that practice question wrong. So make sure you're actually not diving in, into the solution too quick, that you're actually thinking about why you got a problem wrong, and you're practicing that problem or a similar problem again with the overall goal of developing and recreating your own solution. In summary, passing your FE exam is more about your study approach. So you need an optimal study approach that's allowing you to make real and quantifiable progress. And the best way to do that is by deliberately practicing a lot of practice questions. And deliberate practice entails having a clear, well-defined, purposeful study goal for the study session you put in, then you want to make sure you're focused, ultra focused, you're not getting easily distracted when you're studying. Also, you want to rely on the important feedback you get by doing a lot of practice questions and the practice exam. And lastly, you want to push beyond your comfort zone. You want to create a higher standard for yourself and you want to make that a new normal as you're preparing for your FE exam. And if you do all of that, you're absolutely guaranteeing that you can go in there on exam day ready to pass the FE exam.